Today we're going to perform a slump test. This is usually used with concrete, though it can be used with grout or mortar also, though not commonly used with mortar. During this process, you're going to learn some interesting facts about concrete. And towards the end, I have a concrete riddle for you. These are the tools that we're going to be using to perform the test. A couple of these items are required. The others, not so much. This is required. This is called a slump cone. This is specifically used for this test. It comes with a slump rod. This rod is used in conjunction with this cone and these usually come packaged together. You can buy packages that have more items in them such as a scoop or even a specific board that we can place this slump cone on. At the bare minimum you're going to need a slump cone and the slump rod. Some type of scoop or a trowel. You're going to need something to measure with either a stick ruler or a tape measure. For this test we're just going to use the stick ruler. Some type of board to perform the test on. This can be a piece of plywood. Uh, it can be really right on the ground as long as we prepare the area that we're going to put the slump cone on. And I'll show you how to do that. Normally, a concrete slump test is going to be performed with concrete that's being delivered to the job site. Well, I don't have concrete getting delivered today. We're going to mix up our own concrete. I have the ingredients right here. We have Portland cement, Portland cement, not masonry cement. Concrete sand. Yeah, there's differences in sand. This is concrete sand. It has larger chunks in it. Crushed stone, more specifically, three quarter inch crushed stone. This is what's in those pre-mixed bags at the store. This is just a good visualization of what's in those bags. And this is a common ratio. We have one part Portland cement, two parts concrete sand, three parts stone. One, two, three. Simple. Easy to remember. I'm going to combine these ingredients and dry mix them first, and then we're going to add water. The concrete slump test measures the consistency of fresh concrete before it sets. It's performed to check the workability of fresh concrete and the ease in which the concrete flows. It can also be used sort of as an indicator of an improperly mixed batch. This is usually done on larger commercial jobs and performed by an inspector. It's not typically done in residential construction. Maybe in earthquake prone states for residential construction, something like that. As I'm mixing up this concrete, I realized I already made a little mistake. It would have been way easier just to put the Portland cement and sand in, add some water to that, mix that up to a nice consistency, and then add the stone. So that I'm not pushing and pulling all of this stone just to dry mix it. If you're mixing up large batches of concrete by hand, using separate ingredients, I feel bad for you. To make it easier, just do that. Mix up the Portland and the sand. Get that to a nice consistency by adding water. Then fold in the stone. Sort of like making chocolate chip cookies. After the batter's mixed up, when you're making cho chocolate chip cookies, you fold in the chocolate chips so that you're not mixing all those chocolate chips and, and grinding them up and it makes it harder to mix. I've got a little trivia for you. What is the most used substance or material in the world? And I'm not talking construction. I'm just talking in general. You probably used some of this this morning. You might have even drank some of this today. I sort of gave it away. Water. Water is the number one substance used in the world. 
Well, what do you think the number two substance is? And again, not talking construction, just in general. What is the second most used thing in the world? Believe it or not, it's concrete. What? Concrete is the second most used thing in the world. More than oil, more than wood, more than metal, more than any other material or thing, concrete is second to water. Something like 30 to 33 billion tons of concrete is produced each year. I live in the state of Pennsylvania. There's enough concrete poured every year in the world to cover the entire state of Pennsylvania with a four inch thick sidewalk. You can cover the whole state of Pennsylvania and Delaware. That's how much concrete is poured in the world each year and it's growing more and more concrete is being used all the time concrete the second most used thing in the world now we're ready to perform our concrete slump test we're gonna have to do a little make pretend we're gonna make pretend that the concrete was delivered from a truck and when the inspector takes a sample of the concrete out of the truck it's not gonna take it right away not the very beginning of the truck. I'm gonna wait a couple minutes after the concrete sort of gets flowing. Any dry, crispy stuff that's on the concrete driver's chute is gonna be eliminated and we're gonna get a good sample towards the beginning of the truck, but not right away. So we're gonna make pretend that that's what this is a sample of towards the beginning of the truck. We need to prepare our tools for the test. I've wet the board with some water. We need to dampen the inside of the cone with some water. The cone gets placed on the board. Again, there are setups that you can get that have a really cool board to them that clamp down this part of the slump cone so that it doesn't rise up when you're filling the cone. Depending on the slump, when we have a real wet batch of whatever, it can lift the cone up as we're filling it. So there are really cool setups that have these clamps. They clamp this part of the cone down to the board. But again, we have the bare minimum that we need. The cone and this rod. Once we start this process, believe it or not, there's a time limit to it. We only have two minutes and 30 seconds to complete this process. I'll explain a little bit of it to you now, and then I'll try and explain it to you as we're going. I'm gonna fill the cone about a third of the way up. Then we take our rod, pointy end down, and we rod it, that means jam the rod in it, 25 times. Put the rod to the side, fill the cone up another third of the way, repeat with the rod. Only this time we don't bottom out the rod down to the ground. We're only supposed to go into the first part of the concrete that we put in there. Put the rod aside, and again, we fill the cone to the top, rod it 25 times, again, not botting out the rod. Then if the concrete settles a little bit, we top it off with a little more concrete, flatten it off, remove the cone, and even that has a time limit to it and then we're gonna measure from the top of the cone to the concrete. And you'll see, this is the process. Once we start, we only got two minutes and 30 seconds. I'm gonna get some concrete right in the cone. I'm trying to fill it one third of the way up. Don't worry about spillage around the side. We're gonna clean that right before we remove the cone. They're about one third of the way. I take the rod 25 times. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. One, two, three, five, six, seven, eight, nine, twenty. One, two, three, four, five. Put the rod to the side. 
Fill it up another third. So we're going to be two thirds of the way up the cone. A little more. A little bit came to the top. We're going to rod it again. Not bottoming out the rod. I think that's 25. Now we're going to top it off, fill it to the top. And we're going to rod it 25 times, not bobbing out. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 1, 2, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 20, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. Now we top it off with a little bit of concrete. Smooth it off. Now we're going to, before we remove the car, I'm going to clear this away. And we have three to seven seconds to slowly remove this cone and let the concrete settle just a touch. One, two, three, four, five, six. And there's our concrete. We're going to put the cone to the side. We put our rod on top of the cone. This cone is 12 inches tall. The top part of our concrete is going to be our slump. We measure to the bottom of the rod. So we're at pretty much a five inch. We're going to say it's between like a five and a six inch slump. That's about medium for concrete, sort of on the wetter end. Concrete is usually from two to six inch slump. Mortar is going to be from about five to eight for slump, and grout is going to be from eight to 11 for slump. This is, if anything, we'll say on the wetter side of concrete. And that's a slump test. We're back at the wheelbarrow now, and I'm setting up for the concrete riddle. I've added some dry ingredients to this mix to stiffen it up. Right now, we're probably at the slump of one, maybe less. This is pretty stiff concrete. It's pretty stiff. Now, an architect is going to specify the slump of concrete. Architects know that the less water content in the concrete while it's being mixed is going to yield a stronger concrete. Too much water in the mix also has negative effects on the concrete as it cures. As concrete cures, it shrinks. If there's a lot of water in the mix, it's going to shrink a lot as that water's evaporating, which can cause cracks in the concrete. So too much water, it will be easier to work with, but it's very bad for the concrete in the end. Well, imagine if you had to put a finish on this concrete, your arm would fall off. This concrete is so stiff, you're going to be working it with your trowel to get a smooth finish on it. Sure, the concrete's going to be real strong in the end, but we might not get a great finish, a great appearance on the concrete in the end. So here's the riddle. How do we make this concrete wetter without adding water to it. We only have three ingredients in here. Well, four if you count water. Cement, sand, and stone. Let's walk through, let's add a little bit of each one of those ingredients and see what happens to the concrete. Here I'm gonna add some more sand. What do you think is going to happen when I mix this sand into this concrete? Is it going to get wetter or stiffer? All right, that was a stupid question. It's going to get stiffer. You know that. The sand is dry. 
How about cement? What if I add a little more cement to the mix? A dry ingredient. Again, it's just making the concrete stiffer. How about stone? It's like nothing. We mix in some stone. You know that's not going to do anything. Well, now we're back to our riddle. We can't work with this. It's too stiff. But maybe the architect specified a very low slump of concrete. Now the architect is sort of specifying the moisture content, how much water is to be used in the concrete. And we've achieved that. All right, he wanted it a very low slump. We got that. But we can't work with it. How do we make How do we make this concrete wetter without using a liquid ingredient? Can't use liquid. Can't add any liquid to this, but we need to make this wetter. We're going to learn about a word, a term called plastic. Now, when I think of plastic, I think of a hard hat. It's made of plastic. Or a stick ruler. That's made of plastic. Or a plastic water bottle. Those things are plastic. Plastic has another meaning, and that means workable. Right now, this concrete is not workable. This concrete is not plastic. We need to make this concrete plastic. It doesn't matter how much I mix it up with this hoe, this concrete is not becoming any more plastic, any more workable. I have another dry ingredient here. It's like a powder. Looks almost like cornmeal. It's not cornmeal. This is what's called a super plasticizer. This is a dry ingredient that we can add to concrete to make it appear wetter. That's a general term. What we're doing is we're making it more plastic. This is a plasticizer, a super plasticizer. And I'll explain what the difference is between those two. I'm going to sprinkle this on here. And I already know that this is sort of too much plasticizer. But this is just an example for the riddle. I'm going to mix this plasticizer into the concrete and watch what happens as I'm mixing.
Take a look at the concrete now. This concrete is now workable. It's got a nice flow to it. We've increased the workability of the concrete without increasing the amount of water. This will usually satisfy an architect. We didn't increase the water content. We're not going to have as much shrinkage and it makes it easier for the concrete workers to work with if we need to put a finish on here. Very easy to work with. This concrete is now more plastic, more workable. A super plasticizer will decrease the amount of water that's needed for the mix by about 15%. A regular plasticizer is usually between 5 and 10%. And they're chemicals. Chemicals that were put in the concrete that decrease the amount of water that's needed to make it workable. I hope you've enjoyed how to perform a concrete slump test. Again, this is something that will usually be done on the job site by an inspector. And he's just making sure that the concrete is consistent from batch to batch so that there isn't any weak spots in the building. Super important when we're pouring footings for a building. Imagine if the concrete was bad or not mixed properly for a footing in a building. Masons are usually working on top of footings the next day. We could have entire walls built before we realize that the concrete is bad underneath of everything while well, everything needs to come down. Testing concrete this way is sort of one precaution to making sure the concrete is consistent. Thanks for watching the video. I hope you learned something.